earlier this week, I stopped by the Orange County campaign offices for Congressman Mike Levin. The freshman congressman is working on his reelection, but this also happened to be the very first day of the Senate impeachment trial. Here's that conversation. Congressman, thank you for the time. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. I, I want to start because, I mean, obviously today the, the Senate trial for impeachment is, is, is beginning. Um, you were a part of that process. Uh, the drafting of those, of those articles of impeachment that were then sent to the Senate. Uh, I, I, I want to get your takeaway briefly from, from, from today. Well, I think the key is that uh, the American people uh, want to hear from witnesses. They want to see relevant uh, documents and evidence. And, uh, you know, ultimately, we want to have a real trial, uh, not a Mitch McConnell uh, orchestrated cover up. Uh, and I know from my work in the House of Representatives, while I don't sit on the committees of jurisdiction, um, intelligence or judiciary or oversight, uh, nonetheless, I did uh, carefully evaluate all of the available evidence uh, to me and to all of the other members, and I felt it very clear and compelling, uh, which is why, uh, along with uh, a majority in the House, we voted to send those two articles of impeachment. Uh, to the Senate for a full uh, trial. Now, here, here's the thing, because I mean, you're a, a congressman of the San Diego delegation that's really kind of focused in on some some local issues, whether it be yeah. uh, the environment or or, or or veteran affairs. But yet, nationally, I mean, this impeachment process has 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 really kind of you know take, taking center stage you're in the middle of a re-election campaign right now this is the thing that, that that's front of mind for 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 many many voters well i took an oath of office uh, in january of last year a little over a year ago to protect and defend the constitution and that's something i take very seriously and uh, that being said the uh, top priority i think for any member of congress should be uh, to work on local issues and to work across the aisle whenever possible. So if you actually were to look at my day-to-day -day work and the things that I focus on most, whether it be in the committees that I serve on or the hearings that uh, I have the gavel now in, in Veterans Affairs, so the hearings that uh, I've been able to, uh, to host and, and bring local experts to the table, uh, my focus really has been on those local matters of concern. If you were to give this first term a grade, what would you, what would you put it at? Well, I'd like to think uh, an A, uh, given that I'm a new member of Congress, I've been able to pass legislation, nine bipartisan bills uh, in the House, uh, and two of them now have uh, been signed into law by President Trump. I'm very proud of that. Uh, just, uh, you know, recently with the hearings on veteran homelessness, veteran housing, I know, though, that there will be some people in the district that give me an A+. Plus. There'll be other people that don't agree with everything I do. I don't expect them to. I, at the same time, have tried to be as responsible and accountable and transparent to them as possible, which is why I've held 13 town hall meetings in the 13 months I've been in office. I'm talking about Tijuana River Valley. Okay, so it's rough, roughly, roughly 300 million year mark, and we'll see how that gets allocated, um, you know, specifically to that to that to that region. Uh, how hopeful are you that that this this will provide some substantial change in the pollution situation there? Well, I think it will. We look. This is a problem that we've had as long as I can remember. Um, I'm an environmental attorney by background, and I've been reading and listening and hearing about the Tijuana River Valley and the pollution problems for 20 plus years, and it's something that we've tried to work on for a long, long time. We finally were able to use the the trade deal as leverage to get it done. Uh, and, you know, I was really encouraged because when we came forward with legislation, uh, all four of us uh, San Diego uh, members came forward with different pieces of legislation, and the one that actually wound up getting... About the other four. Uh, correct. So myself and Susan, Susan Davis, Davis, Scott Peters, Peters, Juan Vargas, Davis. each of us came forward with a, a different uh, bill back in, I want to say, May or June, and uh, a couple of them were on the uh, North, Amer North American Development Bank. Uh, ours was on the border water infrastructure program, and I was encouraged that the approach that we uh, advocated for to get more funding to the border water infrastructure program or BWIP program was uh, ultimately what was uh, embraced. And let's talk about San Onofre. Looking forward, the next, the next, the next couple of years. I mean, what are some tangible results that can uh, that can come from that? So what we've done in our first year is we have uh, put together a task force. It's co-chaired by the former head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and by a former Navy Admiral. And we've tried to identify solutions. Some of those we've already uh, introduced. One is the Spent Fuel Prioritization Act. To simplify this matter, all across the United States, there are sites with spent nuclear fuel, nuclear waste from uh, shut down nuclear power plants, 
uh, and some others from uh, ongoing operation of nuclear power plants. There's about 100 plus sites across the United States. What makes San Onofre so unique is we've got 8 million people within 50 miles. You've got two active earthquake faults. You've got inactive earthquake faults as well, and you've got sea level rise. So what our legislation does is it says, of all of those sites with that spent nuclear fuel, prioritize moving the waste first from those sites with the highest seismic risk and the highest population density. And of course, San Onofre would be, be number one. Would be at That's or right. near the top of that list for sure. And so getting that language inserted in the must-pass legislation, whether in the budget or appropriations, downstream, that's what we're hoping to do. And we're working with Senator Feinstein's office to do that. Just the same, we need to fund uh, at the Department of Energy uh, a consolidated interim storage program. I'm very mindful there are interim storage sites across the country, but they don't want to become the de facto permanent storage site. And I, I don't blame them. I wouldn't want that either. And so we've got to do all things at once. We need to work on transportation, on interim planning, on permanent planning. It strikes me as a different type of NIMBYism. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> anyway. Coming up after the break, my colleague Danny Freeman will be back with a conversation from Congressman Juan Vargas. 